in general relativity, the curvature of space, the curvature of space-time, these concepts are very important. Here we're going to look at ideas of curvature that you find in Calculus 1. Back in Calculus 1, we find the concept of the derivative. This is the slope, the rise, delta y, divided by delta x, the run. And as delta x goes to 0, you have the slope, dy dx, which is also the tangent of phi. Now, for curvature, the slope must change because if the slope stays the same, you have a straight line, just like one slope, like just going up a, an incline. But if you have a curvature, that means the slope will change. Here's a certain slope, here the slope is less, so it's getting flatter. Here the slope was flatter, then it was getting greater. So there's curvature going on here. So you might ask why not use the second derivative the change in the slope with respect to x as the curvature definition. Well, there's a good reason not to do that. There's a good reason why in your calculus book you define the curvature as the limit here as delta x goes to zero. Think of this little delta x going to zero and slide this triangle down really small and you're looking at the ratio here delta phi, that angle with respect to the arc length delta s. So this definition here. Now this definition is useful when we break it up using the chain rule. It's easier to calculate d phi ds as d phi dx and then dx ds. So doing that, I'm going to write that definition with the phi x and xs over here, phi x and xs over here. And then we know that the tangent is the slope dy dx and we derived this formula earlier. So we immediately can find here that ds dx, that derivative is a square root term, and dx ds, the reciprocal of this, can be put in to this second factor up in there. So when we do that, we have d phi dx and this second factor substitution. Next step is to calculate d phi dx. And we do that from the tangent formula, the second formula here. The phi is the arctangent of the slope. So let's let the slope be u, and then we have here the derivative of the arctangent of u, all right, with respect to x. Think of that as taking the derivative with respect to u and then du dx using the familiar chain rule. So that would be 1 over 1 plus u squared and then du dx. So I have this down in here for you. And the u is the derivative, y prime, so just simply replace that. And then du is the dy prime. And that would give us the second derivative. And we have this nice formula, very compact. And when we substitute in that for the first term, we then get here a 1 over uh, something times the second derivative times the 1 over the square root. And note the same structure here. So this really is 1 plus y prime squared in the denominator with the 3 halves power, because you have 1 power there, and the square root, the 1 half there, 1 plus 1 half, to give you 3 halves. And the, the absolute value works on the uh, second derivative. Now that is a very, very interesting uh, formula. I'm going to show you why that's the definition we definitely want to use. I'm going to show you that by matching a circle that fits perfectly at the point x, p, y, p. Now to fit perfectly at that point, I need to adjust the three parameters of the circle, which would be where I put the center. That would be the coordinate a, comma b. And what is the radius, r? Now the equation for a circle that's shifted from the origin is simply x minus a, that quantity squared, plus y minus b, that quantity squared, equal r squared. And here I'm insisting that the point p is on that circle. So that's the first constraint. The second constraint is I want to match the first derivative. So I want this circle and this curve to have the same tangent at that point. So the slopes must agree. Now watch how I can find the slope here very, very quickly. And I'm going to use uh, the trick from high school that if you want a perpendicular 
a slope to another slope, uh, the product is minus one. So here, I'm going to find a slope of this line here, and then I want the perpendicular of that for the tangent. So the slope there would be here the rise y p minus b is the rise. There you go. And then the run would be here a minus x p. And I put a minus sign on there because the slope is downward. It's a downward slope. So that gives me the slope of this line here along the radius, this radius. And if I then flip it, see, I'm going to put a minus sign in and flip it. So keeping the minus sign on the left, I'll then bring the here inside a flip idea. So I have up top, I have the X one and the Y is at the bottom. And then I have to f actually flip one uh, left, right, thinking with a minus sign because I want the negative of the reciprocal. So the negative of the reciprocal, I'm going to have here xp minus a instead of a minus xp, and then the yp minus b is in the denominator. So that's it. That is the slope of the function at that point. Must match. It must match this. It must match it. So uh, that's very, very neat. And here, uh, there's this little review of the trick. You have two perpendicular lines, you know, their slopes, the products of their slopes is minus one. I would like you though to also do this the long way. Uh, go ahead and show by derivatives that the slope of the circle is indeed given by the formula that we already derived. That's kind of neat to see it two ways. Well, we have uh, many circles though that can touch that point and be tangent, but what we're going to do to clinch the deal is make sure that the here second derivative, we want the second derivative for the circle to match the second derivative of our graph. All right. And for the second derivative of the circle proceeding to take the next derivative, then what you're going to do is work on here your first derivative and here we're going to use product rule, uh, the derivative of the, uh, of the first uh, function, x minus a. Think of x minus a multiplying 1 over y minus b. So the derivative of the x minus a is simply a 1. And then you keep the, uh, the second uh, function, which is 1 over y minus b, the same. Then you keep the first function, x minus a, the same. And then now you want 1... Uh, the derivative of the second one is 1 over y minus b squared than y prime. You might say, why not use the uh, division rule? I hate the division rule. I never do the division rule. I always use the product rule. So I let here like f of x be x minus a and uh, g of x or something or g you know, be the 1 over y minus b and work it that way. So uh, using what we know for the first derivative, we can then plug it in to this uh, second term. And uh, doing that uh, here, we're going to find that x minus a over y minus b with the minus sign gives you a derivative of y respect to x, and there's an extra y minus b hanging around. So it's just simply algebra there. And by looking at this neat result where you can combine here, because we have a common denominator, you simply have the 1 plus y prime squared. Very, very nice. So that's uh, matching things up. This has to match with our, with our curve. And I'm going to leave this to a, a homework problem for you. Let's summarize what we've done so far. We have the equation of the circle. We have the matching of the first derivative. And we have the second derivative that must be matched. And if you do that, and then uh, work with uh, these uh, three equations with three unknowns, and you're going to uh, solve the equations for r, you're going to find that the radius here for the circle is given by what we have set up to be the reciprocal, say, of the radius of curvature. So that is really cool, that the radius of curvature r is given by the k formula in such a way that k is 1 over r. So this formula from calculus, which is your curvature term, I have shown here, and you're going to show the rest with the completion of the homework problem, that 
you have one over the radius of the circle. Very, very, very nice. So you might say, why is it one over the R? Well, it's one over R because when there is no curvature, the R it goes infinity. It's like you know, a big, a big circle, and as R goes infinity, then K is zero. So, like when the when the R is very, very big, like a big, super uh, big circle, then it like looks flat locally. So the curvature is the reciprocal of the radius for that circle. Everything really fits together. It's a very, very important homework problem to master this basic concept before we proceed on in general relativity, looking at curvatures of surfaces. So there's a nice homework problem for you to do, uh, and I'd like you to do another homework problem here, and that is the radius of curvature for ellipse. See if you can derive this result. And next, we will look at the curvature of a surface.